Okay, uh, welcome to the talk. This is Jiun Yu from Stony Brook University and SUNY Korea. So I'll present our uh, project called Barnet, and this is about active recognition in network of passive tags. Okay, recently our community uh, has been interested in two different research directions. The first is active recognition using RF signals, for example, Wi-Fi signals. And the second is a passive RF tag-to-tag -tag backscatter communication. The word passive uh, signifies that the communication takes so little power that the tag can work under the uh, harvested power as opposed to active that requires external power source. This paper is about marriage of these two technology. We propose a bonnet, which is acronym for backscatter analytics and the activity recognition of network of tags and enables activity recognition on passive tags by exploring tag-to-tag -tag communication. One of the reasons we are interested in this is to improve the scalability. I show some pictures to make it clear. So in Wi-Fi based activity recognition, we are limited by number of Wi-Fi devices. Maybe we have a tens of Wi-Fi devices in the houses, but what if? If we go to RFID, we may have hundreds of Wi-Fi, uh, hundreds communication link. So we can explore a large number of tags, but again, all the processing must be happen on the RFID reader, reader side as opposing the, <clears throat> as observing the link requires significant signal processing that tags are unable to do. So now imagine that the tags between, uh, tags, uh, the tags talk between themselves by utilizing RF signal power present in the environment. So if we can analyze uh, the wireless channel, we can explore all the possible tag to tag link. This is all the n square channel. This provides much richer set of information. So what is the core scientific challenge in here? Activity recognition is quantification of wireless channel variation in response to activity. Generally speaking, this requires some amount of complex signal processing in the radio, such as IQ demodulation. This relies on activity radio at the receiver. In Barnet, we must achieve similar wireless channel quantification on passive tags that operates on harvested RF power. So we cannot use the same idea using active radio-based technologies. So let's talk, talk about the basic backscatter link first. Uh, basic backscatter links involves an excitation source and two radioless ba passive tags. Backscatter happens by varying the reflection coefficient of TX antenna between two states leading to backscatter modulation. At RX tag, the modulated backscatter is superimposed with the excitation signal. Lack of active radio means no IQ demodulation. And received signal is a demodulated using passive envelope detector. Envelope detector output is the difference in received amplitude between the two modulation state, delta V. And this delta V can be measurable with sub-microwatt SAR-based ADC. Conventional channel estimation channel, channel estimation cannot be applied on passive text. So backscatter channel, uh, backscatter channel phase greatly affects received signal. Through our analysis, we have derived this equation. Uh, we, wrote, we wrote the detailed derivation of the equation on the paper. I'm not going to derive this equation on the talk, but you can find the detail on the paper. So delta V is a function of backscatter amplitude and backscatter phase. And also the deterministic phase offset controlled by the tag modulator. By changing phi, we can collect the corresponding delta V. Okay, the figure shows the collect delta V with k different phases where delta V is a zero, meaning that zeta VC is a pi, pi over two minus zeta K. Uh, just quick reminder that the cosine goes to zero, uh, <coughs> cosine goes to zero uh, pi over two. Then we now know the zeta VC, which is about 10 degree. Now we can find the amplitude of the backscatter channel by making cosine part to one, which is uh, phi K is minus zeta VC. Then we can estimate backscatter amplitude. So by burying this phi systematically and observing corresponding delta V, backscatter channel property can be estimated. So Barnett has multiple proving, we call the MPP, at the TX tech, and it is simply multiple phases over sequences of different phases. We systematically control phi at the TX, then RX, Barnett estimates the BCSI. 
PCSI is a backscatter channel state information and based on this delta V. PCSI have, has more features, but the core is the backscatter phase and backscatter amplitude. So uh, we only talk about the core in this talk. The figure shows how MPP works on real measurement. The TX systematically controls the V and RX tech estimate phase and amplitude. This is a backscatter phase and amplitude at time T1, then time T2 estimate, time T3 estimate and sequentially. So MPP empowers the passive tech link with the ability to perform channel estimation without IQ demodulation, a completely passive technique to measure channel state information. This is Barnett. So this is our full-fledged Barnett architecture in ASIC design. It consists of envelope detector, which detects an envelope of received signal and simple competitor for basic uh, <coughs> backscatter communication. ADC is plugged parallelly with competitor and BCSI feature is estimated on the simple logic. There are other components for BCSI, which can find the detail on the paper. Based on this design, we can estimate that the power consumption of these blocks are is an order of few microwatts. So with power consumption about three microwatt and assume 30% efficiency of power bursting circuit, binary tanks could operate from the harvest RF, harvested RF energy in the environment in which the input power is on the order of negative 20 dBm. So this is our prototype bonnet, uh, which is implemented on PCB. It has a 10-way RF switch and an envelope detector and MSP430 as an ultra low power microprocessor. In total, tech consumes hundreds of microwatt of power in our measurement of this prototype. And off the shelf device, 16 bit ADC is plugged for verification of BCSI on Barnet. So BCSI consists of backscatter phase, backscatter amplitude. Uh, this, the figure, the below figure shows a three different activity falling a blue line, standing red line, walking blank line in two different subjects. For example, blue solid line clearly shows a feature vector's consistency, and two solid, two solid blue lines are the repetition of the following activity from subject one, and dotted blue line is the same activity from subject two. The red solid lines are standing up from subject one, and dotted lines are from subject two. The black line is walking activity from two subjects. So backscattering phase feature can separate falling activity uh, from standing walking activities. Meanwhile, hard to separate between standing and walking. The second column, backscatter amplitude, shows the <coughs> clear separation between standing and walking. Meanwhile, hard to distinguish between falling and standing. The combination of these, these features make BCSI possible to use for RF activity recognition. So we evaluate our BCSI-based bonnet in our lab environment. Nine research participants were recruited for the evaluation. They were instructed to do eight daily activity, uh, brushing, folding, running, standing still, and to waving. The tax was set to 10 channel phases and sent the packet at 10 kbps with middle, middle encoding. Each activity was recorded for 2.5 seconds at 80k samples per second with 16-bit off-the-shelf ADC. The data from single user at the start position was used, for, used as a training, and the other users and the data from other activity positions was or used as a testing position. We use the CNN for activity recognition uh, as <coughs> use the rules of thumb. You may consult to the paper for the detailed CNN implementation. So the plus shows activity, activity recognition accuracy when we only use the RX1 tag data for testing. It achieves between 65 to 100 percent. The activities such as falling and walking activity is so significant to estimate <coughs> its activity. However, activities such as standing up and sitting down are hard to classify. So as we adding more RX data for testing, accuracy increased to 80 to 100%. This is because richer information is in various data points was used. Okay, so our BCSI based upon it uses completely passive technique to quantify the wireless channel, and it extends the capability of the passive RF tech and achieves comparable uh, activity recognition to active radio-based activity recognition with only passive technique. So similar techniques could be used for passive tech-based wireless channel characteriz characterization for other applications. Okay, 